The 2014 National Native Media Conference is just around the corner. Whether you are a seasoned journalist, broadcaster, or just someone looking for new ways to improve your social media presence, the National Native Media Conference has something for you. My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of the Center for Training and Career, CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. Good evening. Welcome to Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwa Fili Rose Amador. And together we are Native Voice TV. We are the indigenous people. But you know, we have an artist with us today. And yeah. he is a visual, literary, performing artist. And what is that? Please welcome <laughs> Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Welcome, Lorenzo. Okay. Thank you. What is a, a <laughs> visual, literary, <laughs> performing artist? Well, uh, first I want to thank you for having invited me. Oh, you're I'm honored welcome. to be uh, a guest on your program. We're honored and, to have you. Um, we need more programs like this. So we certainly do. Anything I can do to support it, thank you. Just let me know. So the big question, or the questions are: What's visual, yeah. literary, and performing artist? Um, Besides, that fits on your business card. That's the. That's <laughs> you have to turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main reason, because originally I had to have like five different uh, business cards, mm -hmm. and if I, if I've got a, an audition and an agent, this one. If I'm doing a one-man show, this one. Voiceover, this one. So I, I came up with that. That's a good title. So you've done acting, singing. Yes, I'm a professional liar. You, want to see you do it very well. Oh, you're a good actor. actor. You want to see my card? <laughs> I'm a card-carrying professional liar. I belong to the Screen Actors Guild. Ah, oh, yes, we've heard of that. The SAG. What, uh, SAG. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, when, sometimes when I meet people and I say SAG and they don't understand what that means, they get embarrassed. Yeah. But anyway... Um, do they go like, what, is, what are you talking no, about? Like, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Are you insulting me? No. <laughs> so, no, not you, not you. I have to explain. Um, I actually decided to uh, uh, announce that I am a professional liar. Uh, when I was in Albuquerque, I was talking to my cousin, and it occurred to me while we were on the phone, and I said, you realize I am a professional liar. Look, they pay me to use a name that's not mine, <laughs> say words I wouldn't normally say, and be a character that's not me. She's real quiet because she knows me you know, since we were little. And I said, but I'll only do it if they pay me. Personally, I will not lie, you gotta pay me. <laughs> <laughs> so then she's still not getting, I said, okay, I, I'm a storyteller. I could hear her go, Whew. That sounds a lot better. Oh, yeah. So, um, What mm, have you acted in? I've done some stunt work, I've done some, um, Stunt work, like what? Jumped on a horse, jumped off a horse, rode a horse. All of the above. <laughs> you think we all That's right. ride horses? That's right, what a horses? stereotype, huh? <laughs> I did that. Her. I did that for like 15 years. Uh, <laughs> See? You know, you need an Indian on horseback, ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da and then you go, do 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 Well, yeah. way back there, it would be me. So I did that for a while, and then I got my card, I did some commercials, and um, I just did a an indie out of uh, Northern California. This is so cool because one of the problems we have as actors in, the, in this whole business is we only get parts riding horseback and shooting arrows. Mm -hmm. And ever since I got started in this, I said, look, give me a part, I'll be a taxi driver. We're part of the, the community, we're part of the world. Yeah. You know, we don't want to be featured as, okay, um, Chief Joseph, now we understand you just left the reservation. So, 
This particular one I got is uh, titled Locked. Uh, it'll probably be released uh, in the fall. It's getting distribution now. But what was cool was about this one was there's no, I, I don't get any lines till about 45 minutes into it. And I'm just, I'm just cool. I got this like fake Harley shirt and I'm just wiping the counter. No one says I'm in it. My name is Billy. You know, that's what my, uh, my name. No one says, and the last scene, I don't want to go into the whole film, but the last scene you got to see it because this actually broke all stereotypes. The chick in the film. There's this conflict thing. Okay, all you filmmakers, black, you hear, Harley, right? The camera's on this side. <laughs> <laughs> I write off the chicks in the back, cross in front of the camera, fade off into the sunset. <laughs> so that one's going to be released soon, and um, other stuff, but... Oh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's an iron horse. There you go. All right, yeah. they still got you on an <laughs> iron horse. Huh? Yeah. Save a horse right in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have another so distinguishing one. title, and I think it's really important that we tell everybody that you were the first... Native to get a ma or first person, right, to get a master's in American Indian Studies from UCLA. You were the first graduate. I like to tell people I'm the first man in the universe. Well, that sounds better. I like <laughs> to that. get an MA in American Indian Studies from UCLA. That's there was a, they offered the first program. There were five of us that came in there. Leanne, who is an attorney in uh, Arizona now, mm -hmm. she was the first woman. So yeah, that's a distinction I'm proud of. And I understand that you have a oh, that's kind of distinction. <laughs> and she, she so does. then let's go on. She does? <laughs> she does, she does. She does? This will leave my distinctions she, alone. She got, she got the first degree <laughs> in Chicano studies. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. That was right. A long and a first time. degree yellow belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> that's right. No, I, I got an orange belt. Oh, an orange. <laughs> I worked my way from yellow to orange. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yes. but you know what I wanted to talk to you about was your educational series. And we all know, mm -hmm. we've talked about this on the show, how yes. important it is to tell our own history, to tell our own stories. <clears throat> and, you know, right now, this, the history books deal, you know, don't tell the story. And it's, it's not our version. And I like what you're doing. You put together an educational series that can be used in the schools, in elementary schools, high schools, in the community in general. Tell us about that. Well, we all have grown up not being uh, portrayed well in, uh, in books. And that's really where all these uh, film stereotypes came from. Um, because you had non-native writers originally, and this goes way back, way, way back, um, before any of us had contact with uh, Europeans, uh, those people were writing pamphlets about us without even having met us. So that's, that's a bad history. And I decided at some point that maybe I could make changes through education. So I got my teaching credential, I got my BA, went on, got my MA. And over the years I've decided that I could combine these talents and maybe reach a bigger audience and do several things. One is dispel stereotypes. Uh, teach children wh who we really are as human beings and how we contribute to the world, mm -hmm. to society. And so that was the, the one aspect was like the, the media aspect and the other is uh, educational. And how do you do that these days um, to, you know, to big mm, groups of people? Uh, I do speaking engagements. Um, I do receptions. One guy, you know, maybe 200 people, 1,000 people, whatever. The media. The media. So this buddy of mine, he was a fan from years ago who had knowledge about computers. I've got a mm -hmm. Mac, he had a Mac. And coincidentally, he and his, he and his brother were working on this um, nature kind of hiking thing. They're both nature guys. And we met somewhere, and just around that time, I was thinking, what if 
something like this happens. And so I developed the concept kind of on a napkin and I said, uh, Richard, what do you think if um, I produce, direct, write, um, a series called Native America? And he says, what? And I said, yeah, he says, we were just talking about doing this nature thing, wondering who could host it, and uh, we know you're an actor, and so the rest is history. Well, some of our greatest plans are designed on napkins, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> greatest <laughs> concepts. Well, I had the pleasure of seeing one of the films, and it is a delight. In fact, I knew some of the people in it, so that was a real thrill. Yeah, it's nice to see. Stanford one. Great, you've seen the trailer, too. Let's yeah. take a look at that sure. um, and see what you've produced. A little sample, anyhow. Welcome, I'm Lorenzo. I'll be your host as we travel Native America. Many people seem to feel that Native traditions are dying or are already dead. This series clearly points to the contrary, that it is thriving and being passed on to new generations. Each episode of this series takes you, the viewer, on a half-hour tour of a Native celebration somewhere on the American continent. Copal is a sap, a sacred incense that comes from the copal tree that grows in Mexico. The sap is harvested once a year in the state of Morelos, up in the mountains. It's harvested at the beginning of October, and by the middle of October, fresh copal has made its way down to the villages in honor and preparation for Dia de los Muertos. Ursula Jones, granddaughter of Julia Parker, daughter of Lucy Parker, and this is my daughter Naomi Kashaya Jones. Each event is open to the public. As your host, I lead you to explore the sights and sounds of Native America from the Native perspective. Although the origin of powwows comes from the Plains tribes, it was brought to California in the 1950s, during the time of the government relocation policy. By interviewing artists, dancers, elders, and tribal leaders, 
you get an up-close and personal appreciation for contemporary Native life. We'll see you next time on Native America. Wow. Those are great. It really makes you want to see each and every one yeah. of those. You know what I liked about that whole piece is <clears throat> they had, you know, all the different rep all the different tribes re represented, you know. It's was, it was nice to see the, the Mexica mm -hmm. Indians there too as well because they are indigenous people just like us and the borders, you know, just a line on a piece of paper. That was the original concept. Uh, that's why I say Native America. Originally I wanted to do Native California. Mm -hmm. I thought, but I'm doing a gig in Albuquerque and then one in Milwaukee. This is Native America. Yeah. This whole, all these continents belong to us, from Bering Straits to Tierra del Fuego. Yeah. So, I've got endless events to do. Each episode is uh, an mm, is an event, a native event that I cover, interviews, food, art, and so on. Um, I have right now we have nine episodes. Um, big time Point Reyes, big time at Yosemite, uh, Stanford Powell, Dia de los Muertos. Uh, I'm particular to include mm, people that are a little bit further south. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're my cousins. Mm -hmm. right? Borders, there are no borders. I'm Mescalero Apache. I met some guy from uh, somewhere just south. Mescalero Apache, right? Before Europeans arrived. Right. We just go back and forth, back and forth. Now this should be in each and every school. Yeah, How can exactly. someone order these? How can uh, the you know, school districts order these? Well, of course, they can contact you, but if people would like to contact me when the episodes are running or they have any feedback, mm -hmm. I'd appreciate hearing from everyone. And you can contact me. My email is lorenzo at goldrush.com. Lorenzo at goldrush.com. Mm -hmm. Real simple. And I, I answer all emails. Uh, you call me and leave a message on my machine. I will call you back. Great, or you can contact us, yeah. and we'll get in contact with Lorenzo, but these really should be oh, in all schools. The libraries, I mean, just the city libraries alone, mm -hmm. they, that should be mandatory for there, That's for and sure. not in the world section. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get some, some indigenous music, and it's in the world section. section. It's in the world section. <laughs> that is that big. Yeah. And then you go over to the Native American, it's that big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have his CD, and you have my CD. <laughs> That's right, yeah. so. Hey, let me ask you a question about, as an educator, <coughs> what's your, your views and thoughts about the, the exit exam for, for the high school? Well, I think I, I look at the broader view. Uh -huh. We were here first, uh -huh. and they should learn our culture. Yeah. They should learn our language. And um, I'm actually working on my own test. Oh, good. That I would make mandatory for teachers to take and professors to take. <laughs> and I would be the only judge. And if they didn't learn, oh, yeah, hey, oh, if they didn't learn that song the first time, 20 more weeks. Flunk them. They can't teach anymore. Yeah, yeah flunk them. Give me your credential. That's right. Go on. <laughs> that's no, how I, that's, but that's how I feel. But about seriously, it. yeah. I mean, I think they're culturally biased, you know, because. They ask us so many different things about things that we never even grew up with, you know, we never even heard of, you know. I remember growing up and they're telling me that, you know, George Washington was my forefather, and I'm like, 
It's not my poor father. <laughs> Does it look like me? Yeah. We are surrounded by beautiful artwork. Now tell us a little bit about what you can have here. We have these tiles. Can you explain some of the work yeah. that's here? Well, see, this is the, the other aspect of my card, visual <laughs> artist. As performing artist, I'm a singer, mm, actor, dancer, and so on. Visual artist, I do graphics, I do uh, sculpture. Uh, these tiles are actually my, my logo mm -hmm. that symbolizes harmony and balance. Uh, I designed it over 30 years ago. If you see it anywhere, posters, postcards, or anything. That's it. 30 years ago. Ah. And it was a concept that I had uh, in my own life that was developing. And as I did silver, I had like the one bare paw. And then I thought, oh, this is going to work. So it's the positive and the negative, the male, the, the duality female. duality of everything. Yeah, I, we, see, we see that. That's typical, you know, in all indigenous um, people. You know, we see it from one, one aspect to another, something similar to this. The or yeah, the balance of everything. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Gorgeous work. Yeah, I like it kind of, it, it's, it's kind of the, like the negative of the other one, right? Yeah, it just, yeah. when an artist works in a theme, you, you try it on everything, yeah. everything, everything. Uh, I made a template and then I uh, sandblasted them. Uh, this was a, uh, a granite, I forget what material this was. I think this material was free, mm -hmm. so I thought I'd try it. And you brought us, let's see, a broccoli and a chili. Yeah, I was going to eat that chili, but I found <laughs> out it was a sculpture. <laughs> They're bronze, yeah. yeah. I poured, uh, well, it's called Lost so Wax real. Process, and I, I pour them in bronze. I've done, I've done a number of things. I got this funny story because I wanted to do corn. Uh -huh. Now, and Corn I or porn? Uh, oh. <laughs> I said, <laughs> corn? <laughs> okay. I said corn. Please. Okay. Corn. K-O-R-N. Right. Corn. Uh, and there's these little uh, corn that like, like remind me of indigenous from Mexico where it, I mean, all the birth of corn is down there, our people down there. Yeah. And the way this is done is you invest it in plaster and then, uh, because this was a real chili, that was real broccoli, and because they're combustible, mm -hmm. they uh, will disintegrate in the heat. Yeah. You put it in the kiln. So I get a call from my uh, foundry and he says, Lorenzo, we, we have a problem. We have a problem. And they're all laughing. The girls are laughing. Everybody's laughing. I said, you have a problem and you're laughing? He says, yeah. He says, when we put in the kiln, the popcorn popped and all the molds just blew up. Oh. <laughs> so I, I had to find another way to do that. <laughs> yeah, popcorn, huh? Well, you got to remember the Native Americans invented popcorn. So That's right. That's, that's, right. Our, that's they our They were trying food. to make a So he just reinvented the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, I want to ask you. I want to ask you about this picture here because I was intrigued with this picture when I first sat on the set. It's really nice. Mm. The title of that one is Cousin Warriors, mm -hmm. and it's based on uh, a series of photographs that were taken of uh, Apache men. Mm -hmm. um, Geronimo was not in this one, but it was uh, his band, his cousins. By the way, I have a distant relative. Uh, named Geronimo, but he's not the same guy. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to experiment mixing uh, paint and, and kind of a landscape and a, a photograph of some of my relatives from a long time ago. Yeah, it's really nice, I like that. Thank you. You know, we're almost out of time, but just for the audience's sake, we will be bringing Lorenzo back next week because he has so much talent and we just want Thank to you. share so much with you. Yeah. And be, before we close, uh, we'd like you to honor us with a song, Thank an you. Earth song. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> this is, uh, the title of this is Earth Song, and it's a tribute to where we all live. The earth does not belong to man, its man belongs to mother. Wahey, 
Wa he ya e wa he ya he Wa e ya he wa e ya he wa he ya he ya he we ya he Wa he ya e wa he ya he Wa e ya he wa e ya he wa he ya he ya he we ya he The earth does not belong to man It's man belongs to mother Wa he ya he ya he we ya he Wa e ya he wa e ya he Wa he ya he wa e ya he wa he ya he ya he we ya he Beautiful. That Thank was you. beautiful. That's nice. So, what are your your future plans? We have about a minute to wrap up here. You can tell us. Um, I want to shoot more episodes, travel more country. I'm looking for corporate funding. If there's anyone out there that wants to support what Big I'm doing. Big producers. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, this has all been done on low budget, and you saw the credits. I'm the producer, the writer, the host. The Everything. Stunt man. The stunt man. <laughs> you know how we native people will do it one way or another. Like wow, this we program. We wish you a lot of yes. luck. Exactly. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for being here. And it's remember, been a real pleasure. Next week, Lorenzo. Part so, two. Part two. So stay <laughs> tuned. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you next week. We'll Good night. July 10th through the 13th, 2014 at the Hyatt Regency, Santa Clara, California. Registration is available on the website of Native Public Media, the Native American Journalist Association, and Vision Maker Media. Call 405-325-1649 for details.